Hey you, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Martijn and this is part five of the Drive Home tutorial series. In this part, we will tackle the environment lights. If you haven't checked out any of the previous parts yet, be sure to check those out first. Otherwise, let's get started. So this is where we left off last time with the uh, lights of the cars in front of us. Um, and what we're gonna do uh, now is take the street lights and copy that function uh, and we will call it env lights for environment lights env lights and the same way as we did before uh, we're gonna go down here and composite those environment lights into the final result so I'm gonna just copy the tail lights and call this env lights over here and let's go back here tail lights headlights and lights and if you remember this was the function that we made to get a semi random number or a pseudo random number i'm going to just cut that and move that to the top and i'm going to make another version of that because this one takes one number as an input and it gives you a semi uh, or a pseudo random number as an output I want more pseudo random numbers as an output because we're going to have random colors and colors uh, for colors we need three components. So instead of calling this function three times, we can just make one that that will um, that will return us three um, that will return us a random vec three uh, instead of uh, a float. So what I can do here, and actually let's make it a vec four so that we get one extra random number out of this that we can use for something. So it's going to return a vec4 and I'm going to call this function n for noise 1 4 for I put one number into it and I get four numbers out. And then what I'm going to do here is instead of multiplying by a number here, I'm going to multiply by a vec4. So I'm going to do vec4 over here and now I have to come up with four uh, four components and these are just uh, random numbers that I'm putting in that are kind of spread out a little bit so you don't want them to be too close to each other uh, so 3000 and also we don't want them to be too large either so I usually keep them under under 10,000 so let's say something like that and then over here instead of multiplying by a number we multiply also by a vec4. So let's see here, this one is 345, and then I do 8,799, and I do 1,564. And this, there's nothing special about these numbers, I'm just, uh, just random numbers off the top of my head. Okay, so now we have a function that will give us, for, for any one number, it gives us four pseudo random numbers. So let's go back to the env lights over here. Um, so these used to be the street lights. So let's, um, so if you remember the street lights were, there are two to the right and two up. Uh, that's what this two, two is over here, two and two. Let's break that out into X and Y. So I'm going to do x and y, and I'm going to do float x equals something and float y equals something. And what I want is I, I want the the environment lights to to be um, uh, kind of simulating anything that's outside of the road. So maybe some shops or some other roads far away. Um, and so these lights will appear farther than two to the right. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to put them randomly. Also, I'm going to say, OK, uh, the lights will start uh, outside of the road. So they will start, at, let's say, 2.5 and they go to, let's say, 10. And then I need some random number to move between those uh, positions. So actually, let me go here and let me make a vec for n for noise. And then we're going to use the function that we just made. And I'm going to throw just my i value into it. So each time we go through this loop, this is going to give me a different set of random numbers. Um, and now I can just do n.x, for instance. 
and the same thing I can do for the Y. So, uh, but the Y, like for the height of the lights, we would say, okay, the, the lowest lights are at, uh, uh, are, are at ground level or maybe slightly above ground level. So let's say 0.1 and the highest lights are, let's say 1.5. I don't want them to be as high as the street lights, so just a little bit lower, and then I do n dot y. All right. Um, so let's see what this does. That gives me an error. Let's see what we did here. Um, okay, I gotta figure this out. Somewhere over here. Oh yeah, I forgot a comma here. All right. So now. I have a bunch of like randomly placed lights outside of the of the road. Um, and let me go back. OK, so now these lights are, have the same color as the street lights. I want these lights to be random, randomly colored. So um, yeah, so what we did before is is we we just accumulated a mask value inside of the loop. And then just in the end, we would multiply it by some color. But if, if every dot has a different color, then we can't do that. So what we have to do instead, uh, instead of accumulating a mask value, uh, we have to accumulate an actual color. So I could go here, instead of mask, I do vec3c for color, initialize that to black. And then over here, I'm going to accumulate my color. And then over here, I'm just going to return that color. And let me just also break out this fade value here. If you remember, this was the, the fade, like the lights that the lights get more faded as they're farther away. So let's put that over here. Float fade equals that whole thing mi minus the asterisk over there. Um, and then we have to multiply by some color. Right, so like each bokeh point has a different color. So I'm just going to do here times call for color. And then what is my call? Well, I can go and make that call uh, just from this random number here. So this is a vec4 and we want a vec3. So I could just do, oh, and I'm also using the x and the y component already. So um, let's, uh, let's start with w, which is the last, the last component. Uh, and then and then go backwards. And now we are we are reusing the Y component, uh, but uh, that doesn't really cause any problems. So let's see what this does. All right. So now you can see that those lights have changed. Uh, they have changed color. So let me press play here. Okay. So that's that's kind of all right, I think. Um, Let's see what else can we do. I think I would like more, but I would like them a bit more faded. So um, yeah, so if I want more, I could I could change this value over here. Um, another thing I can do, I could experiment with is the depth, because maybe I don't want these lights to start all the way at 100, uh, because um, that's too far away anyway. So what I could try here is instead of uh, distributing those points over a distance of 100, I can distribute them over a distance of 50 uh, so that I have the same amount of points, but they're, they, they start closer. I think that, I think that works. Uh, one thing is that right now they, uh, this is uh, symmetrical, right? Like the, the lights over here are the same as the lights over here. And that is because my noise function does not take into account which side I'm on. So I need to use this side uh, value over here. So I do, let's say, plus side times 100 to make these numbers di very different for, for each side. Um, or actually, well, they're different by 100. So let's see what that does. So now uh, that gets rid of this symmetry. And now um, what I want to do is I want to simulate that these these light sources they get occluded sometimes so, uh, because there is something in front uh, that isn't a light source and and when a bokeh point gets occluded it just kind of fades away so I, I want these lights to kind of twinkle as they as they come past us so how can i do that um 
I should probably just take this fade value and multiply that by uh, by a sine wave, let's say. So I could do fade times. Actually, let's make a, a variable, call it occlusion. Occlusion. Um, that is going to be 1 when something is occluded and 0 when it's not occluded. And it's going to be a function of the distance uh, from uh, the distance along the road. So let's say I take a sign and I throw this ti into it, and ti goes from zero to one. And uh, a full phase revolution of a sine wave is it like takes doesn't doesn't take just one; it takes two pi. So I have to multiply this by two pi to get. Um, to get like one full phase revolution. Uh, and then I actually don't just want one, um, one revolution, I want, I want a bunch of them. So I'm gonna have to experiment a little bit with this to see. Um, and a sine wave goes from one to minus one, right? And I don't want that, I want it to go from uh, zero to one. So how I do that is I multiply by 0 0.5. So now it goes from 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.5. And now I just add 0 0.5. And that's how I get it in the 0 to 1 range. So let me just set fade to occlusion right now to see what that does. OK, so now I have, um, yeah, so now I have a bunch of flickering lights, but not really the way I want it. Yeah, so, get, so to get these lights all to, f to kind of um, get occluded on their own, um, I can just add a random number to this sign function here. So um, I can just multiply this by, let's say, n dot x. And so now every point uh, is shifted differently in the sine wave to kind of get the occlusion here. And now maybe this is a little bit like too, um, too Las Vegas-y. So in the end, what I can do is I can just multiply this by some smaller than one number to just fade them out a little bit. Um, and if you want, you can tweak this. Uh, like I said before, a lot of shader making is tweaking of values, uh, but I'll leave that to you. So the last thing I want to do here is I want to go back into the main function and I want to add a little bit of a sky gradient because right now everything is black but I like to have it that when, like the higher up in the sky you go uh, there's just a little bit of skylight that you can see so the way I, I'll do that is I'll just add something to the color in the end and what do I add um, well the higher up in the sky I go I want to add more color right so I can use the ray direction this ray direction that we get from the camera array. Uh, and I can use the Y component of that. Uh, if I just do this, let's see what that does. You see that added already a little bit of uh, gradient over here. Now, but what I want is I want that color to be uh, bluish. So I'm gonna make a bluish color. So let's say, let's say this. And now it's very dark, so you can't really see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that whole thing down a little bit. And the way I'm going to do that is by going here and just adding some value to this, uh, to the ray direction. So now I pulled this whole thing down a little bit to get some color gradient on this thing. Um, also, the last thing here, I will make the time, because right now it still goes a bit fast, so I'm going to make the time value go like twice as slow. Again, you can tweak this however you want. So, um, But that's it for now. So the next time, uh, hopefully it's the last video, we're going to do the rain effect. So see you next time.